morning to everybody. So, <clears throat> can I come from wife and sisters? It's a small company with no open source and provide the solution for ITSPs <coughs> and uh, has some services for uh, core uh, web. And so I will explain uh, how we try to solve the problem in real time focus control with using uh, uh, so how much of you uh, using Erlang and programming every day in Erlang? <laughs> oh, that's great. So, I, so many? <laughs> yes. I will give a short uh, explanation about features of Erlang that we use to achieve our goals. So, and um, we will explain how we integrate it with Camellio and uh, how we track the call for the Camellio and also this is a part of our uh, developing pro uh, product uh, named uh, Switchware uh, and also explain the major uh, features we developing for the Switchware. So, Erlang actually is a, a process uh, Based. Yes, the fundamental concept in the Erlang uh, is a process, but that process is not uh, like uh, you know it's the process of operating system, or, nor any tree. It's very lightweight and cheap, so you can spawn a few hundred, uh, few hundred thousand uh, processes in one second. So um, every process in Erlang actually is isolated from other processes and doesn't share any memory. So you don't need to use the locks and, and to fail with uh, dead locks or to replace some value that another process uh, will use. You also can fail if you need some wrong <coughs> update uh, in another process space. So, um, it's communicating them um, and uh, with sending messages with, uh, between the processes. And also that it's a uh, functional programming. What functional programming uh, that means is uh, that everything is data, including function, and like integer numbers of strings, and you also, uh, algorithms are executed with the function calls. So uh, that's does this mean that there is no any while or loops that you iterate to the uh, some array or list, but also you, uh, it's, you cannot uh, update variable in place. Once you bound a value to variable, it must remain unchanged or to execute function. As I said, uh, because you, you cannot, you, plus it doesn't share memory, but they do this message passing that uh, send between processes. So every process has own mailbox that when it, when it arrives in messages and process sequentially presses that messages. So uh, actually main primitives to communicate between processes are asynchronous. Uh, to send the message to another process is very simple in the in Erlang. And this is you it's enough to know the process ID. That process ID has, uh, is associated with many information, like uh, nodes where the process executes. And uh, because we are sending messages between uh, processes, uh, it's, we must take care that that, that message is just too short. That's, it's probably be short, because if you exchange uh, huge messages, probably you will spend much memory. So Erlang also has a uh, little bit in mind that it's called tolerance system. So uh, Erlang has all the all tolerance infrastructure based on the linking processes together. So you can spawn some process and link on that process and we uh, in receive uh, what happened in that process at the end. So using that um, <coughs> Linking the processes, uh, Erlang, uh, you, you can in Erlang uh, spawn process and control that process. 
and sending messages. I also know what happened in that process in, in when we got some access signals. Um, this is a usually you know, process tree. And you can do the supervisor, the worker, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, sending messages between the workers or the supervisors and uh, track what's happened with uh, workers. The sending messages between processes uh, actually is transparent, so it's mean that you can send uh, a message to another node in the element. When you send the element a virtual machine, actually it's acts as a node. You give them some name. It could be visible on the net or will be locally and uh, um, send it messages. Every process address actually contains itself the node name. Uh, uh, so, but even it's it, it's asynchronous. You can uh, uh, act, uh, you can create a code by synchron, but waiting that something uh, you see in process response. Based on that, uh, there is also RPC or remote procedure code that you can use between nodes and processes in in Erlang. But uh, usually Erlang has associated name as OTP. Actually, that was the first name given to Erlang is Open Telecom Platform, but today it's not Open actually Telecom Platform, but it's mostly a system for concurrency. So what is the uh, ecosystem in OTP that we used? So we can create different processes. That's a supervision and worker, and have some list of strategies. So, but uh, programming is not perfect. Even requirement is not perfect. So, in some cases, your process can crash. So, when your process crash, you also you don't want to crash all application. But you can easily that process and have some risk strategy that or risk that, that process or not. But of course, you can't. Uh, reset state of the process because that state actually of the process causes that, that, that crash but you can reset the process and start over again everything what you can uh, build in Erlang is, is contained in the modulus and all modules you can uh, bind package in some application but it doesn't mean that you package that for deploying but it's mean that you uh, 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 one that some uh, set of models act as a single entity, so that you know. There is a two types of application in in um, Erlang. Uh, it's active application that is running, and you can have one single instance or many instances, or it's just only as a library. For example, OTP is an example that is library. So that library, as as I previous uh, said, that we can supervise some processes and have different roles in <coughs> processes. OTP developed uh, as a library give us a possibility to have some generic uh, processes like server, uh, events, or finite state machine. So everything what you have to do is that use that behaviors and uh, programming codecs for some event, for example, finite state machine or uh, programming what happens then you receive some message. <coughs> so that's processing of messages and do you uh, have that as a cast or is it a call? It's already there. So you don't have to care about that you send and wait for something to be received. And also allow very flexible and uh, easy to build a uh, system with all tolerance. Also allow to upgrade the system in runtime. So when you find some bug, okay, you don't want to stop application, to rest up with a new code, you can in runtime update that compiler code <coughs> or downgrade whatever. That process actually happens in releases. Yes, because releases is actually a subset of OTP applications. And when you build a release, it means that you will pick up only application you want to that release. You don't need to use any other. And you actually build some, what in Linux said, 
see it through, just for them. <laughs> so, and it's also about the free update or download system in, in runtime, without that. So, this is a actually based up application skeleton in Erlang. Um, the first two uh, nodes you give from actually the infrastructure you have to build to create some OTP application. So uh, later of that is actually what you have to build. So what is the roles of all these uh, processes in this process stream? First is one application. It's allow that you set up environment for application, the load application, and check whatever you need to check before you start. And you have, must have a root supervisor. It's some supervisor actually allow us to spawn other another processes you need in your application. <coughs> the processes in Erlang can be named, actually registered, like you what you register in domain, for example, domain name to IP address, here is that you have registered name into process ID, so that you can send messages directly to addressing to the process name and it's on some node. So this is good because if uh, this process serves to other processes and always must be run. The other processes are created dynamically. So and they only can be accessed by ID, and you must know ID before you access it. But everything of that is in OTP. There is a wrap of that in OTP that we can use it. <coughs> so how we did it? We actually create two supervisors, accounting supervisor and CTR supervisor. The accounting supervisor actually allows us to spawn uh, supervisor to monitoring services. So our user has some set of services, and we can spawn a process tree that controls that service. Service and also, so we have um, for all, uh, online transaction processing CDR as a CDR server. That's we actually put the uh, to the CDR server uh, generated CDRs uh, before we put that into the ODBC connector, and we, we are ODBC connected to some database, relational database. So you don't need to wait a uh, database to write the data because it could be it be slow. We have many uh, many CDRs, but we use the special database called Nasia in Erlang. It's not replacement for classic database, but it's used only to connect different nodes. And it's distributed also. When you write something in one node, it will be uh, available to another node. So you can maybe on that node write information CDR, but another node or you can dump it to relational database to offload process. And every service we have in, the, in this supervision tree has balanced service. Actually, it's a service of what we created for subscribers, for example. And there is a limitation, for example, full credit limitation, maybe soft limitation that you want to notify subscriber about uh, that is close to the, the uh, uh, credit limit, or for example, for prepaid, whatever. But it's how we handle that uh, balance. And we have also call supervisor that we uh, used to spawn a call control process, but actually do billing. Uh, we can have many calls for one subscriber. For example, if you uh, billing the whole trunk, probably you will have many calls. So you need to every call to be tracked in that process. <coughs> and there is a set of behaviors we use in the in the application. So service. Supervisors, it's a supervisor behavior, balance as a server behavior, and call supervisor as a supervisor, and the call control used in state machine. But it's also uh, one behavior in Erlang that is pretty nice because you can, uh, most of process you can uh, describe in the 
in state machine, like the code. Usually when you're learning about codes in school, you use the in state diagram. Here's how it works. <coughs> uh, when the core setup happens, we actually spawn the process and core process and set it in some state, we name it as a ringing. This is probably that you receive a provisioning response, like begin with the 100. <coughs> and uh, there is a, actually, we actually we, uh, track the, what happened in dialog in the SIP. That's when dialog is created, but it could be uh, confirmed, but not <coughs> uh, acknowledged, but again, actually, again, uh, here, so if it's we receive, for example, 200, this means that we have a dialogue established, but it's not confirmed. When we receive acknowledge or we lost acknowledge, we can uh, change state of the uh, in state machine. But uh, when we have confirmed the uh, dialogue, then we go to the answer state and we use timeouts. In the state machine, you can set a timeout. How long you want to stay in some in some uh, state? So it means that we can use that for building intervals. For example, if you build by the minute or a few seconds. After that, you can calculate a new cost for that interval. <coughs> check with the balance uh, server. Do we have available balance for next interval in advance, of course? And if not, we can terminate that call. Sending message back to the uh, command. So, actually, the main idea is just to follow the dialogue states. How we can do that for the command? Actually, to, to set up command to uh, act as an L1 node, we have to create an L1 node as a C node. There is a few libraries that we use for uh, create a C node. This is an L interface library for serialization of data, because you have to send it in binary format from the, to the L1 node. A connects is the L1 interface for connecting uh, to the L1 node and <coughs> to register itself in the L1 cluster so that any other LM knows, knows about Uh you, From this library, you can use send and receive asynchronous messages, but you can also call RPC, use RPC to call some procedures remote. <coughs> but uh, to be alive, actually, to, to other nodes, knows about you, you have about nodes, you must uh, handle keep alive. It's something that uh, Alan sends to the nodes and check if it's uh, uh, C nodes actually is a hidden node in Alan, so it's not visible and you want to show what node connected to the node, what other nodes are connected with monitoring node, because you cannot use everything in, in a C node what you can do in Alan, especially if you want to uh, fail over some application from, from another node <coughs> because you cannot fail over Camarillo on Erlang, <laughs> because it's not created in Erlang. So it's a uh, hidden node, and there is some limitation. Everything about uh, clustering in Erlang is done by the Erlang port map demon. They use the uh, cookies to register uh, to group all nodes in one cluster. So they actually share the same cookie between you nodes. Know, so, how we, what we created in the, in the Camarillion, we created custom-made model, CBE, that actually acts, acts as a helper, and is found as a helper node process, and also can be, there's a function that we can call from the receiver or timer yes, uh, process. We export also some script commands that we can initiate billing, and with an Erlang node. Export also some uh, RPC that we use from the GUI to check balance state or update balance state or whatever needs to 
to send to the service process because when we start service processing in, in, in LRH, it's is cached in the memory. We can use time out if there is no any for that service and drop, drop that pass now. So helper does uh, community or communication with the Erlang and also export some APIs for uh, Erlang node that we can terminate for if there is no available balance. What model parameters we must use to configure that? We have to name, give names command view, so that the Erlang nodes knows and can address uh, messages sent from uh, Erlang application to command view. And also, command view must know the name of the uh, unique application in Erlang. So this name looks like email address, but actually, this is here is its uh, host name. This is node name, but we on one host can many nodes. As I said, it's just uh, partitioned by the cookie. We also use building call flag to know that we build that call. We set and reset that so that we, when the script executed at the end, we know that we start building or not. As also, as I said, cookie that we can connect uh, those nodes. Example of using uh, a script, we just need to, to call TV, we'll call with the information related to, to that uh, call, and everything has happened. Myself, if there is no available call, we will respond with some uh, code, and we need to call that uh, in in the route request, in the failure route, because we also implemented by some, some kind of LCR that we can uh, walk over the vendors to find uh, 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 a cheaper vendor for that call. So because we organized uh, a vendor with many proxies, so one vendor that provides ITSP service can have many proxies. We use dispatcher for uh, model for that, but when we uh, want to jump from one uh, vendor to another, we also need to initiate billing from the up in the in the, in the billing engine because we the billing uh, engine we uh, build also subscriber and we control costs over the trunk. And there is a few uh, RPC commands we use to communicate with the network. This is a simple data model we use. We have one user can have zero or many services. Every service has preferences, and uh, every service has associated uh, rate card. So, for example, vendor, seed trunk, or subscriber has its own service. So we can buy, uh, we can um, control buy and sell what we sell and what we buy with the vendor. For example, if we uh, sell what we terminate, we can. Uh, charge the vendor and vice versa. Is it good for because we can control costs over the some vendor and receive some notification when we approach them some limit we set in advance. There is a major services we provide in a switchware. We also can sub classify these uh, services and also, we, build, we can build the prepaid, postpaid, and time-based dialing and buy and sell. Or it also can have scheduled rate cards. Because if you use a real-time real billing, it is important that you know that from some period in future you will start with a new price. So you can schedule this, this on time and billing will be started with new rates. <coughs> This is an overview of the Switchware project. It's an API-based communication platform that allows us to integrate with the other application for invoicing, uh, creating uh, and provisioning services with the API. As I said, there is a several types of uh, services we offer with the Switchware. Uh, we do billing at the same time. We produce CDRs for the vendor and for the uh, subscriber. If we resell actually that call. 
So when in this building, so you'll be able to actually to see what you sell to the subscriber and what you buy from the vendor, and you see what is different, and do you lose or win mm -hmm. Also can uh, manage DIDs, porting and reservation DIDs from different uh, DID providers from the USA, and automatically LCI and MCI, actually when you import uh, some uh, when you import some uh, service bundle rate cards from the vendor, you can calculate the maximum rates per destination, and you can distance sell from that and put some percentage you want to <coughs> and generate the uh, end user uh, service bundle. This is a one screenshot of all the developing application which were with this some simple dashboard. So that's that's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Questions around? And probably I will take that first one um, about this um, airline. Um, does it save you a lot of uh, like uh, time? Because I understood that it's not easy to troubleshoot. That to put it straight. Is it uh, worth the effort going there for those? So, but the learning curve of them is much huger than usually. Is. So you see, a minority. <laughs> <laughs> so, but there is some other advantages. Uh, but maybe the debugging looks very hard, but it's not. When you click on to use Erland, the debugging of is actually be easy in some cases because you have, can unlock many things what happened in the system. There is a, there is a, uh, a native logging system in the Erland based on the event so that you can activate when you want to work something, what happened in the system, but there is also a Bashur developer's own uh, Vardian application that is, can colorize that and put it in the syslog between community and yeah. Okay. The idea was that if one of those processes dies, how you know that it died and how you know all this stuff. But anyhow, yes, I get uh, my answer. Other questions around? It's uh, Will, it be, will the module be available open source? So this is custom made module. So but actually it's open. The source is open but of course it's licensed. Is the application the airline application too? No. <laughs> Okay, thank you.